guys, what are we going to talk about? Well, you saw from the beginning at the title, we're going to talk about counterfeit knives, knockoff knives, uh, complete clones. Uh, you guys know I'm not a fan of it. I'll get into it when we talk about it from above, but here's the thing. I don't... I do know that knives are so similar, and this is going to be a little bit longer intro, so I can get it. Knives are going to be similar. Like, uh, some people were saying that that Kubi KU-344 is very reminiscent of the Arius. I don't see it, personally, but, you know, you're going to see similarities between knives across the spectrum, just because there's only so many dyes, designs you can do. But where I have a real problem is stuff like this. So we're going to turn this around. We're going to take a look at it from above. But first, you guys turn down the volume because here comes a little bit of music. This is going to be a buyer beware video because there are a bunch of counterfeits out there and I don't want to see anyone get got. But on the flip side of this, this is also going to be a chance for me to talk about something that I hate. I hate counterfeit and knockoff knives. They are truly the slimiest, lowest of the bunch. Now, I do understand, as I said, that some knives are going to look similar. You can't get by that these days. But this is an absolute attempt. The branding, everything on this is an attempt to pass this off as another company's knife. That is possibly one of the worst things that anyone could do. And these, they're not doing a real great job of it. I can tell you that. Um, one of the things that really bothers me uh, is people justifying this. Like, oh, well, I can't afford the real one, so I'll get a copy. Well, I got news for you. You're not getting anything like, oh, I want to try one out so I can see if I would like the real one. I got news for you. You get a fake Norseman. What do you get? Well, you don't get a good, accurate portrayal of a Norseman. You don't get a good, accurate portrayal of any knife if you get a clone or if I'm trying to find something else. Like if you were to go and say this was a much more expensive knife and you're like, oh, I want to see what it's like. And then you bought a knockoff. You're not getting anything even close 99% of the time. I had the fake Norseman that we had on here the one time. And it absolutely was garbage. The the titanium was absolutely not AL4V titanium. It was it was it was bait. It was like I, I don't even remember what it was. Uh, alpha case, um, and it, it wouldn't anodize. You couldn't do anything with it. They said the blade was M390. Now having ground knives in 20 CB M390, if a proper heat treat was on it, there's no way I could have ground that knife down to dust like I did. So you're not getting a rep an accurate representation. So I don't buy that. I think that people want the clout of having something that looks similar or looks almost identical to the knife that they want to portray having. Um, knives that are really predominantly uh, counterfeit cold steel. There's a lot of counterfeit cold steels. Norseman, there's a company in Hong Kong that makes a knife that looks exactly like this. They even call it the Norseman. They also make knockoffs of other companies and they have a logo that is almost identical. They even have their milling in the same areas uh, where it says proudly made in Hong Kong inside instead of proudly made in Canada. Uh, there's a big problem with that. Now, do I think that a company that has done it in the past is completely irredeemable? No. I think that there is a retribution arc. Uh, Ganzo has got some really nice knives out there. So that out of the way, let's go ahead and look at these two. So this is a honest, to goodness, counterpoint one, cold steel, made in Taiwan, nice blade shape. They've got their Zytel handles. It is a triad lock on this, um, really, really good lock. And you can tell it's triad lock because that pin is down in there that takes up that gap. Uh, the cold steel markings on the pocket clip are actually exactly how they should be. And, wow, that is a triad lock. They're really stiff. Um, and so this is not a real heavy knife. It's nicely done. Uh, like I said, all the markings are correct. The packaging is correct. Uh, the packaging on it, Cold Steel has always had this style pack. Now, I'm not sure what their new packaging looks like because they sold out. Uh, but this is what I expect from the packaging. Now, in comparison, Zytel handles, triad lock, reversible pocket clip, uh, proper markings, the weight is right, the steel is right, the grind is 
pretty horrible, which is just pretty pretty much what happens when you get cold steels. But you can always sharpen them and fix them. I, I've owned more cold steels than probably any other knife brand. Um, nice and smooth on that. And you, you, you're getting all the specs. So if you were to look this knife up, this is exactly what you would expect. This is a complete piece of crap counterfeit. Um, it's not even ground well. You can see that this tip comes down. It's almost recurved in here. Horribly, horribly ground. First thing first, let's look at it. They didn't even get the blade shape close to correct. This is more of a dagger style, bayonet style that comes down nice and swept. This is, I don't know what that is, but it's horrible. Um, the markings on it, 7-Eleven AM, apparently that's when it was made, I guess. Uh, not even close. Thumb studs. Let's look at the differences in the, th and I'm doing this so that you guys don't get got. So Cold Steel High Performance Knives, that's not their logo. It doesn't say that anywhere on this knife. It doesn't say that anywhere on any of the knives that I own, but it does say it on their box. So you can see where that confusion came from. And on top of that, if you look, the font isn't even correct. Um, little things to look for. Now, let's get further into it. Pocket clip. Pocket clip is kind of similar, I guess. You can definitely see this is a much better pocket clip. Not as long, you know, the much better pocket clip, not as long. You're not having your pinch point down inside the hole. That is obviously poorly thought out. As poor as some cold steel knives are, you're not going to have that issue on that. Uh, another thing to look for, handle material. This handle material is aluminum. This is incredibly heavy. Does it look like a counterpoint? Yeah, not really. Uh, it doesn't really have the same overall chamfering and things like that. And like I said, aluminum, I'm pretty sure it's aluminum. Let's get a magnet. Let's see. Not even aluminum. I believe that that is maybe aluminum over a steel liner. That might be some sort of plastic, but that definitely feels as though it's either aluminum over top of this thing is heavy. So I'm going to say that's probably aluminum over steel or steel over steel. Next thing to look for, lock mechanism. If you know a knife has got a triad lock, you would not expect to see a liner lock and a poorly done liner lock. I can feel flex in that. If I was to, I guarantee that I could break that lock over. I don't want to risk cutting myself, but I guarantee I could do it. I could feel the lock stick having... Oh, can you see it? I absolutely am flexing that blade. Yeah, that's very soft steel. Not going to have good lockup. So automatically, that should set off some bells and whistles right there. That does not even feel like a cold steel knife. Um, so thumb studs, markings, these are the things you want to look for. And so it's not hard to find an example of this knife online where you can look at it. Uh, most of their vendors are going to have pictures of it. Another thing to look for is this does have an actual spot for you to put your thumb. It is actually on there. So you can get your thumb on it to stab through things. This knife, two-piece construction. Look at how this is built. This comes down to a solid clamshell with a back spacer, lock back. It is two-piece construction, yes, but it is solid from here all the way up through with your lock spring. There's so many ways that you can easily determine that a knife is counterfeit. Now, I do know that people order things, they'll have pictures of the actual item, they send it up, and they, they basically sell it at a reduced rate. I would always say, look at the price, and then look at it. I don't buy anything knife-related on eBay anymore, by the way, because this is the kind of stuff that happens. They'll put up a picture of this, and it looks good, and you're like, wow, that, that's they're selling that for like $20 less than cold steel is. And then you get it and you're like, oh, that's why, because it's a $5 piece of crap. It is really easy to prevent this. I'm gonna give you three ways you can prevent this. First and foremost, know the vendor you're using. I don't buy anything on eBay anymore. The only thing we buy on eBay is stuff that we've purchased, like my daughter's costumes. Uh, there, are, there are people that sell the skating costumes on eBay and they do a pretty good job of it. Uh, so I'm not complaining about that. I don't buy anything else off eBay except stuff that my wife needs that is just basically clothing stuff for my daughter skating. 
So pick your vendor. Pick a, re a reputable vendor. Don't pick a fly-by-night. There are still websites online that are knife vendors that are not reputable. They still rip people off. Um, so Knife Center, Blade HQ, Amazon, if it's an, if it's Amazon Prime, yes, uh, there have been a lot of knives sold on Amazon, sold as, um, as actual knives that are counterfeits. It has happened. Uh, I report them every chance I see them, but you can absolutely make sure that you're getting an Amazon Prime item, and that's typically going to prevent you from getting got. Any place else you're going to buy knives online, I, I would recommend these. Are, these are my preferred vendors. I've never heard of anyone getting screwed. Uh, KnifeCenter.com, White Mountain Knives, uh, Blade HQ. Um, and knives ship free. Those are my four preferred vendors for knives. Uh, if it's pretty much anything out there, I'm not going to buy from anything. I'm not gonna buy anything from anybody but them on this. So guys, just some little pointers. Like I, ha I had an example, I thought I would throw it out there. I hate these counterfeit knives. I hate the knockoffs. I hate people that are using people's logos and branding it the same. Are knives derivative? Have we reached a point where there's so many knives that are similar that knives are going to look the same? Yes, we are. Let's take a look real quick. Tucson TS383 and then the blade on a Ferrum Forge Mordax. Very, very similar blade shape. Is this a knockoff? No, it's not a knockoff. Very common blade shape. So there, there is a point where, yes, knives are similar, but there's also a point where you're going to have to look at it and go, okay, they're directly stealing from these people, which is what's going on here. So like cold steel or not, it is unfair because the thing is people will get these. This is the other reason. This is the last reason I hate these. People will get this thinking it's the real thing, and then it's just a piece of crap, and they get a bad taste in their mouth for a brand or company because they may not know that this knife is not the legitimate thing. Like a lot of us are in the knife hobby, have been for a long time and can pick this out of a lineup in a second. Well, that's why it's a piece of shit. It's fake. If you didn't know anything about knives and you received this, you'd be like, man, cold steel. I thought they were better knives than that. See what I'm saying? So there we go, guys. That's it on this one. Let's turn it around and do some final thoughts. So there you go, guys. Some counterfeit knockoff knives. Buyer beware. They are out there. They are, they slip their way in on Amazon every once in a while, like I said at the tabletop, but you know, very rarely, uh, especially if you're using Prime. Use the correct vendors. On top of the fact that it is just sleazy to steal, it's, it's theft. It really is theft. If you can't come, I mean, some of these knives are pretty well done. I'm not gonna lie. I've seen some counterfeits that were well, well done. If you're that good at it, just come up with your own design and make it. You know, you may flop, but at least you're not stealing, so. I don't want to get into too much on this because then people get in the comments like, well, I own this, I own that, I own this. I don't care. Um, I will delete those comments. I, I will do nothing to, to publicize and make it better or seem like any comments that seem like they are justifying uh, knockoff knives. I, I, I refuse to allow that. It's something that I, you know, I know a lot of these makers at this point. I'm friends with a lot of these guys and it's out and out threat theft of work and time that they put into things. So that's it on this one, guys. If you like the content, give it a thumbs up. If you don't like the content, give it a thumbs down, but tell me why. Uh, don't just tell me it's because I'm crapping on counterfeit knives uh, because you like them. So I don't, I don't need you on here then. Um, uh, if you want to, you know, want to support the channel, it's as simple as like, share, subscribe, drop a comment, hit the bell icon. And make sure you've got notifications turned on on your device so you get notified of everything. I forgot what I was going to say there for a second. If you want to support the channel financially, it's as uh, as simple as going down to the description below and finding a way that you want to do it. I have a membership that gets you in on a bunch of different benefits based on tier. Pick the tier that gets you what you want out of my membership. I will tell you, though, however, everyone saves $5 on the sharpening service and everyone has access to the Gilded server. But a little perk that you might want to look at is... At the premium tier, I have a sharpening tutorial series I've built for those guys. Other ways you can do it, I have affiliate links down below where a lot of the stuff you see on the channel is available for you to purchase. Anything you purchase through those links, I get a little bit of it at checkout and it doesn't cost you anything. And the final way is I have a merchandise store on Ember Shirt Co. where you can save 10% on anything you purchase on Ember Shirt Co. with my coupon code CRAZYSHARP, capital C, capital S, all one word, CRAZYSHARP. 
Um, and it saves you 10% at checkout. And if you send me pictures of you wearing my merchandise, I will put them in the description. Guys, I love you all. Keep it clean in the comment section. If your birthday, happy birthday. And I will see you in the next video.